覚めたようじゃなどうやらまだ死ぬ定めではないと見えるもう一つのことは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これは、これ You level up your character through fighting foes and defeating bosses. Typically, these games award an in game currency that players use to level up attributes like strength, vitality, or endurance. But in Sekiro, you're asked not to unlock levels, but moves. The more a player progresses, they unlock variations of moves, or more powerful ones. It's a fighting game. What is so interesting about unlocking moves rather than upgrading skills? This is a description for the Ichimonji combat art. Ichimonji delivers a heavy, one hit overhead sword strike, deals high posture damage, and also recovers one's own posture with a strong forward step. Let's break that down. First, you're told what you're going to be doing, then, the impact of the task at hand, and finally, additional passive benefits to yourself. When was the last time a task you performed at work was so eloquently explained? As the skill based economy marches on, What Sekiro does is make a strong argument for why clearly defined tasks and their impacts might be a better solution for learning at work. <laughs> Skills are great as buckets. For leaders, you see what people are capable of. When hiring or searching for jobs, they give you a general idea of the role. But, for a learner, how useful is a skills based approach? Let's consider ideation. A fantastically in demand skill. At the time of writing this, there are almost 18,000 jobs in the US on LinkedIn with ideation highlighted as a key skill. Say you consider yourself as having pretty good ideation skills. That doesn't mean you would be right for those almost 18,000 jobs. For a learner, what does their ideation skill actually mean? If they're learning that skill, do they have any idea when and where it'll help them? Maybe it's time to get more specific. Let's take a look at ideation through the lens of task based. Task. Taking existing new product ideas from a team and ideating with them on ways to improve their ideas. You will generate new ideas together and gain exposure to ideas for other work. Assist leaders in generating ideas for new operating models. You will help push their ideas further and provide in the moment feedback to ensure ideas meet stated needs. Work with colleagues to ideate new lesson plans. You will share your experience and student feedback, ensuring the voice of the end user is heard. Task, impact, benefits. And importantly, far more specificity for the job at hand. When you design your next learning, don't just consider the skills involved, but the tasks that learners will likely be delivering with them, and its impact for them and their work. Sekiro is a game about fighting monsters, so it stands to reason that unlocking new ways to do that would make sense. It might not be for every workplace. Is task based too limiting? Does it prevent learners from getting access to certain jobs because they haven't done the exact task required? Skills allow for finding similar work that a learner might be suited for, even without the experience. Perhaps then what is needed is a hybrid model that brings both skills and tasks. It would give learners and leaders what they need to learn, work, and develop themselves for whatever their futures hold. That's everything this episode. Let me know in the comments. What's your signature move? Are you a skills based or a task based learner? See you next time, and don't forget to like and subscribe.